Hey, good day, everybody. It's Brian Terrian with Mike Sanders. Good to have you back. Thank hey, you. We've... Thanks, Brian. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, Mike's with NTI at home, and we're excited to have Mike back because uh, there's a lot going on in the job market movement now that, believe it or not, COVID is starting to settle down. Um, and it's created lots of opportunities for individuals that are Social Security disability recipients to get jobs. But now you've got some new news for us where you've expanded it. So we're going to talk about that. It's not just Social Security disability recipients and their caregivers. It's others. So before we get into like uh, jobs and how many jobs there are, what kind and the qualifications and what the next steps are, Let's just go back into NTI at home. You guys have been doing this for a while. Can you give us the backstory again, Mike? Absolutely, absolutely. We've been around for 25 years, and we've been helping out individuals with disabilities, family caregivers, um, gain work at home jobs across the United States. And we are the premier company in order to do that. Um, like I said, been around for 25 years, helped out over 100 100,000 individuals within their job search. Last year, we placed almost 700 people um, wow. within jobs, and that was a nice little highlight considering the pandemic. Um, mm -hmm. But things are really flowing for us here at NTI. We're getting a ton of new jobs coming on in with different flavors associated with them all throughout the United States. That's exciting. So 700 people last year landed a job. That's correct. That's correct. Nice. Nice. Um, so the jobs, the, the common jobs that they have, are they all work from home now or what? I can just, I was thinking when you said 25 years ago, I just, that was a whole different deal, right? Yeah. Than, yeah. than what's going on now. But for today's marketplace, what are the jobs like? Um, it's a mixture out there. So we have uh, different jobs for all industries, actually. Um, so it doesn't matter what industry that you're looking for. We probably have uh, employer partners come to us looking to place um, individuals with disabilities as well as family caregivers within work from home jobs. And those jobs, just to give you an idea of what they're like, so, for example, if you're broken down, God forbid, on the side of the road and you have to call up um, roadside assistance, you may actually be talking to an NTI agent. And if um, a doctor has to get some information regarding pharmaceuticals and uh, the allergy medicine associated with it, they may actually be calling up an NTI agent when they, when they call. Um, another scenario would be if you have to call up uh, to get information regarding your taxes, tax forms, things like that, so that way you could clarify your information a little bit more, you may actually be talking to an NTI employee who's giving advice to you so that way you can move forward in your life. So those are the types of jobs. Yeah. And Interesting. It's mixed out there. So part-time, full-time, seasonal positions. Um, we have split shift positions as well for those with disabilities like fibromyalgia who may need a break in between uh, to manage their disability. So it's a really wide array. The term you, you used was switch shift? Oh, split shift. Split shift. I got you. I was going to yep. say, that's a new one for me. <laughs> All right. All right. So we have these different work at home jobs. You have different companies that people are working with. Could be roadside assistance, pharmaceutical, IRS. Um, and you can work in uh, it's shift work is what I'm hearing. We're going to get into that a little bit more in a minute. But Absolutely. two things Two things I want to just, you know, I know there's people out there in the disability digest world. They're like, okay, how much does this cost? Does I have to, do I have to pay anything to get a job? Let's yeah. get that out of the way. Zero. Goose Zero. Perfect. Yeah, we're Perfect. funded by our employer partners as well as the Social Security Administration in order to make this work. Okay. So um, if people come through the door, we offer them free training, job coaches, um, guidance with their job search in the terms of training, um, both technical as well as job search training. Mm -hmm. and we also mm -hmm. provide free recruiting services. 
Mike, I got to ask you this. Uh, people in the Disability Digest world, I know they're wondering, like, how can I do this and keep my benefits? Like, how much money can I make and keep my benefits? I work so hard to get them. So what do you have to say for the listeners out there? How do you explain that to them? Absolutely. So for the first nine months, cumulatively, um, you, you have what's called a, a trial work period. And during that trial work period, you can actually make as much money as you want to while still keeping your benefits. What they want to do, the Ticket Work Program, wants to give you a chance to see if work is right for you at your own pace. Uh -huh. So that way you can manage your disability as well as um, come on back to work. And um, during that time period, you may work three months, have a setback, and then decide like another two months later that you want to come back to work doesn't mean that you used up five months. It just means that you used up the first three if you make uh, what's called SGA or 940 a month. And okay. Yeah, so so that month will get used up once you hit that target, target dollar. But you could potentially stay underneath that amount while working part-time and keep your benefits over the course of the whole entire time period. NTI right. allows for part-time work. So that's a good accommodation for you. Okay. So there's there's two different aspects of this. One is if you're below the uh, SGA, which at the time of this recording is $940 a month, it doesn't have any impact on your benefits. You can do that every month. That's but correct. then if you want to go and like, let's say you just want to rip it up and you want to go and earn as much money as you want, you have nine months that you can earn over the 940 that are counted towards your trial work period. Okay, Absolutely. right? That's correct. Then, then after the nine months, is that a one-time nine months or does that reset at any time or do you know? It's one-time nine months and if um, during that period of time what they do is they give you a chance for you to try doing this and during that time there's no uh, medical reviews because they want to see if you or they want to give you the opportunity to see for yourself whether or not you could come back to work again. Oh, uh, so you're exempt from the CDR from the medical review if you're in the trial work period? That's correct. Oh wow, that'd be huge now. That's there's a lot of those going on. Yeah. Um Okay. I know we're on limited time here, so I want to make sure we cover all of the key things with the pandemic um and what has happened in the marketplace. The you know, it, it used to be working from home was luxury and it's, it's changed. But what do you see with the companies that you're working with, um, Mike? What are they looking for? Is this a trend that you see that's increasing? It is. It is. Um, so during the start of the pandemic, it was a, a megaton job explosion that came our way. Yeah. And it, it caused a tsunami of jobs to come back from um, across the seas, and companies were looking for a place to hire work-at-home employees, which opened up the doors for individuals with disabilities. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so during the course of this time, we were able to get all these new jobs, um, new people coming through our doors, a lot of notoriety through the New York Times and Forbes, um, other publications out there, and it, it really put us on the map. Uh, one of the things that also happened was companies realized that not all these jobs need to be call center jobs. Um, historically, work at home jobs have been call center jobs, but they're now starting to realize that new positions out there could be done at home. They don't necessarily have to be done in the office. Mm -hmm. And we're starting to see those come on through. Right. And they're along the lines of inside sales, um, where you're really not doing a lot of phone work, you're doing more online pieces. Um, but we're starting to see more and more chat information, uh, people coming through with chat information and be able to handle those types of um, connections between customers and employees. So it, it's, it's starting to trend towards that. People are opening up their eyes. They're seeing it as a solution, not just a perk. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah. Uh, so for uh, in the in your business, you've had this influx of jobs come in, um, and you've opened it up, right? Twenty five mm -hmm. years, primarily focused on Social Security and SSI recipients. So, what is the criteria now? Who could come to you and possibly land a job? Anyone with a disability. So uh, we use the CDC's definition of disability. I'll share that with you right here. And if you have any trouble with um, walking, difficulty with dressing, bathing, any type of mental, physical, emotional disability at all, we use that CDC's definition for disability. Okay. And anyone could kind of come on through and be a part of that. If... Um, but they are a family caregiver, which we instituted before the pandemic. Um, we wanted to open up the doors for the people who care for the people that we support as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So all those individuals need to do is talk to um, one of our job coaches, let them know that they're a family caregiver, helping an individual with a disability, and they'll be invited to. Not to all the positions, because some of our government contracts are specifically for individuals with disabilities. Um, however, they will have a wide range of positions available to them. And okay, so great. Mm -hmm. So CDC. So on the CDC side, if somebody has a limitation, um, I, I'll refer to that. Um, does it need to be medically diagnosed and treated, or what's the criteria to meet that? Yeah, it, it just has to be documented. Uh, mm -hmm. and then it's at a certain point um, when it comes down to employment, they would just have to uh, demonstrate that to us. And I think that you would be okay with everything that's going on further. Okay. So, um, so I think that's all that they need to do in order to make that happen. Okay, great, right. great. Let's talk, Mike, about uh, pre-requirements skills. You have individuals listening to this, some examples that we just said, been out of work for, you know, 14 years, but even if you're out of work two years or three years now with the way technology is going, what skill sets do they need to have? Can they go from like not working, doing anything right back into it? I've seen it. Um, so we we do, we look for a couple of different things, and I'll, I'll talk to you in a second about how we do that, but we take a look at what their computer skills are, because that's always important in today's environment. Like, do you use your email every day? Do you use your computer every day? How familiar are you with it? Are you good with problem solving? And that might just be having a discussion with somebody and, and being able to problem solve through that. Um, are you good with customer service? Do you like talking to people? Mm -hmm. That's a critical skill, even regardless if you were not working in any type of call center industry, it's always an excellent skill to, to have out there. Mm -hmm. And um, it's, it's how are you as a person? And we try to get to know people that way. And one of the ways that we're doing that right now is we do a video skills assessment through HireVue. And uh, what we do is we have an individual take their cell phone and they do a uh, recording in front of the couch or in, in their living room or outside, wherever they feel comfortable, and we pose a couple of different questions for them. And why do we do this? It's not, we're not giving this to the employer or anything like that. What we're trying to do is gauge what is your level of confidence and skill set with certain areas going on forward. So mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. how do you think you would do with mock interviews? How would you do with your resume? How would you do with your um, providing an elevator pitch during an interview? Uh, what are your technical skills? Like, how often do you use a computer? What do you use it for? And those are some of the questions that we would ask. And then after you're finished doing that video assessment, you're assigned a job coach. Um, that job coach will take that information from your video assessments, watch that, and be able to tell you, hey, these are the training aspects that we think you should take within NTI. And they're all instructor-led courses um, that are online. So you'll be able to go in, get some personalized contact, 
uh, where there's no more than four people per workshop and be able to guide you through your job search pro process, how to write a resume, um, doing mock interviews with you. We're creating a new course on speech so that way you can improve your uh, dialect if, if you have any issues or if you have stuttering issues. We want to make sure that you succeed on these positions. Okay. Um, yeah. And we also offer two, a two-day workshop that is dedicated to helping people return to the workforce in a work-at-home environment. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So individuals can come through, they'll do a video assessment, you'll get a benchmark. And if it's perfect, great, but likely not. Uh, then you can guide them to where they need to improve, suggested areas of improvement. Absolutely. Um, and it, it's not graded either. So when if you go in there and you think you messed up on it, no, don't think that way. What we're trying to do is help you. It's not okay. a knockout type of test or assessment. Um, it, it's an assessment so that way we could find out where you need improvement in certain areas and we could give mm -hmm. you guidance to move on forward. Mm -hmm. Very good. Very good. Yeah. So if somebody's willing to work and put in the effort and the energy, then they could get up to speed. Yeah. That's what I'm hearing. And the person that you mentioned before who um, didn't work for 14 years, the individual who didn't work for 16, um, she ended up taking all of our training classes because it was very new to her to come back to work and very foreign. Okay. She succeeded with that. She took copious notes. She uses it every day within her current job that she's in now. Within three months, she's already been promoted. So yes. it shows you how much success could come out of one person if they put in the effort and the due diligence. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Love those stories. That's really good. Mm -hmm. Can can we do this? Can you map out uh, the rest of the pieces for onboarding to a job? Absolutely. Oh, look yeah. at you. You've so I got, got you props. a nice little map. Uh, don't lose the video on this. Um, cool. But essentially, someone registers for NTI. It literally only takes them about three, four minutes in order to do a really quick process in order to get an account. As soon as they get an account, um, hit submit on that. It's for free. Keep in mind, all this is for free. Mm -hmm. um, they end up getting an email from us. We are very highly into emails and phone calls. So make sure that, one, your voicemail isn't full. Um, and you do check your, your email messages in case you sign up for this because it's going to give you the next steps very promptly. And that first next step, is um, the video assessments, which I just mentioned, and the gaming. It takes no more. I, I've seen somebody max it out in an hour, but typically it takes maybe about 20, 25 minutes to get your thoughts together, do recording. I would suggest do a first take recording because I've seen people do this. Yeah. They'll do one recording, and then it gets kind of messy but on the second recording, then it gets messier on the third. Just go with the first shot and say, I, I'm going to stick with that. Um, keep in mind, it's just a guidance tool for the job counselor to help you or the job coach to help you move on forward. And then okay. um, once you're done with those video assessments, job coach reviews them, connects with you, tells you to give it, set up an appointment with him or her. And they talk through, like, what, what exactly do you want to do? Where is your direction? How do you want to uh, proceed forward with this? I'm going to suggest taking these couple of next classes and see where, you know, if you like this and if you want to move on forward. Um, we measure on all aspects of the process going on forward. So you want to be prompt with this stuff. If you really want a job, you could get one within less than two weeks period. Um, what? I've actually, really? Yeah, I've actually seen people get it within less than a week um, because they were aggressive with it. They set up time with the job coach. They set up their training. They treat it like a job search, and mm -hmm. they just punch on through. 
and they get a chance to interview with some of these organizations who are actively hiring and they're able to get a job. Um, okay. It's, and keep in mind, these jobs are just for individuals with disabilities. So you're not going to find them like on, on Indeed or Monster right. or any of the other tools. They're just for this program. So once you graduate on step four with passing all of your classes and you're successful with them, you get a chance to apply to a lot of those positions. And like I said, they're exclusive. So you're not competing with the universe for one position at Amazon. You're competing with only the people who are within our program. And there's more than likely more than five plus positions for every single job that's out there. So um, you get a chance to interview, get a chance to connect. Um, it speeds up the process a lot more because companies are relying on us to be their seventh interviewer um, as an addition to their staff. We work very closely with them. So there's most likely a chance that they're going to accept our opinion on whether or not this person should be hired. And they're going to take uh, what we say is law. And if it isn't a good position for that person, what we're going to do is talk to that individual, guide them to a different position um, within, within the organization or um, with a different company. And we'll be able to move that person forward to success. So that this is basically our bread and butter right here for moving um, people into a brand new job. Seven steps to success. You got it. Seven steps to success. I love it. Yeah, and you can do it in two weeks or less. Mm -hmm. That's correct. Okay, really good. Um, before we get on to like how you can learn more, I just want to recap some things here as we wind down in the last few minutes. Sure. Um, you folks have been doing this for a long time, 25 years. There's an abundance of jobs out there now. So individuals that are either social security disability recipients or meet the CDC guidelines or are a caregiver mm -hmm. are potential candidates. Is that right? Correct. Correct. Okay. And for our disability recipients out there that are concerned about your check, you can earn up to $940 a month and have no impact on your benefits or you can go into the trial work period and test gainful employment and earn as much as you want in any one of those nine months. They don't have to be consecutive. Right, Mike? That's correct. Okay, good. And talked about the skill set. If you don't have any, don't be concerned. You folks, sounds like you do a wonderful job. So it's really just if somebody's listening to this and they've, you know, they've want to get back at it for whatever reason you know how do they learn more about you what's going on okay like boy you're say, prepared today man look at this <laughs> definitely go to the link at the bottom right here uh, um nti at home dot org and uh it'll give you a chance to register um if you give a call if you're looking for other information out there 877-248-8912 uh, okay. You'll be able to talk to one of our representatives out there to get some additional information, but I would definitely um, apply to the program because at that point you're going to be um, dedicated or you're going to give or they are going to give you a job coach so that way mm -hmm. you can ask any questions that you want to. It's for free. Mm -hmm. There's no commitment to it. Um, we've had people sign up for the program before and say, no, this isn't for me right now. And we're not going to bug you. Um, we realize that individuals who come to us, they either want to do this now or they don't. And mm -hmm. the people who are the most successful in the program are the people who do. So we want to make sure that we focus on them. If you want to kick right. the tires, I think it's great. If you want to go through the training, awesome. You want to continue all the way through the process that's fantastic because if you hit it hard and you keep on going with it you're going to get a job yeah. so don't give mm -hmm. up with this like the 700 that did last year so i mean i thank you for coming out i know the uh, the feedback the emails that i get we've got this cost of living that goes up like this and then we have our 
cost of living increase and then we have the actual cost of living and then we have like Medicare Part B premium. So it's just getting tighter and tighter and tighter for disability recipients. So earning some extra money for those that can do it is definitely a good thing or, or getting all the way back into employment. So yeah. thank and you for coming it's out. It's our chance to do it. It's our chance to do it with all individuals with disabilities. There's a lot of people who are unemployed right now not mm -hmm. taking advantage of the jobs that are open up in the market. Here's your chance to take over. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Awesome. All right, Mike. Thanks again for coming out. We'll have you back again. Thank you, Brian. All right.